It's good to have everyone out tonight, and I'll ask you to join us in the choir, everybody that will. Come on up and grab a book.
Anybody have a song on your heart tonight? Amen. It's good to be back in God's house tonight. It's good to see each one that's come out to be with us. Uh, good singing tonight. Uh, good, good to have God present with us tonight, and I'm just thankful for his blessings in the song service. Uh, before we go any farther, I want to have altar prayer, and I know there's a lot of special needs around us, and tonight let's uh, pray for Ed's daughter is mentioned on a prayer request yesterday, and also let's keep Betty Rohn in our prayers, and Nelson and Nelda, I ain't heard nothing in that situation, but keep them in our prayers, and I know there's a lot of other requests. Has anybody got a special request you want to make mention of at this time? Remember Callie. Yes, she needs our prayers. Need 
Nehemiah. Yes, remember Bernard and let's keep Peggy in our prayers and Wanda and you said Bobby Donaldson. Jenny's aunt in Florida. Remember what I made desire. Yes, Lee Krivsky. Continue to pray for him. Anybody else? Leland, remember her. She's sick. What I need. And remember the little AJ and Lynn Flax. He's getting better, but he's continues to need our prayers. Anybody else? Anybody got an unspoken request tonight? A lot of unspoken. The Lord knows all about that. So everybody that can and will, let's come to the altar. Scott, if he will lead us in prayer tonight. Amen. Again, it is good to be in God's house tonight. Good to be able to be here and good to have a desire to want to be in God's house. That's a th something to be thankful for also. Uh, tonight, i got a few places, believe it or not, to read. And I'll just ask you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, that's where we'll do the bulk of the reading. But I've got three or four places I want to read before we get there. And uh, tonight, the message, I guess you could say a new person. That's what we become when we get saved. When we get born into God's family, when we become a Christian, uh, we become a new person, or that's what we're supposed to do is become a new person. Over in, um, while y'all are turning to Ephesians chapter 4, I've just some other spots that I want to, to make mention of, but especially, and, and if you want to turn with me to these other spots and mark them, well, that'd be a good idea also. But over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, uh Paul speaking, I believe, in every one of these uh, scriptures that I will make mention of tonight. But Paul speaking here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. As I said there a while ago, uh, a title for this message tonight would be a new person. Uh, when we get saved, when we be, be born again, when we come to see the light, uh, when we get things right with God, uh, we become a different person. That's just the way it is. Uh, we should be able tonight, um, we should be able to do a quick examination on ourselves, uh, reflect back on the past, maybe as, as the way we once was, and then say now, amen, we are different. We should be able to, we should be able to do that. I thought, you know, though maybe for some younger ones uh, that maybe was saved at, at a very young age or whatever, uh, a life may not be able to look and see this that biggest change like like maybe some of us can see a bigger change but uh, I'm not judging but you should be able to look if you're a young person you should be able to look around and you're around a lot of young people at school and things and should be and again not judging but we should be able to look and see there's a difference between me and that person because I know God we should be able to see a difference if God is in our life. If we can't see a difference in ourselves from what we once was, or, or if we can't see a difference in everybody else around us, they don't seem to be no difference, then that ought to be a big question right there, that something's not right. Because he says that uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. A new creation. It's who we are. Uh, it's how uh, we must act when we're to this new creation. And it's, it's not that we, we go to acting different and all these things so that we can get saved. It's not that we go to acting different and, and must act a certain way to keep ourselves saved because God saves us and, and God keeps us saved, okay? But, but we change as a result of having been saved. That's, what the change, that's where the change comes from. It's not to, not to get ourselves saved, but a change happens in us because we know God, because we have been saved. Romans 12, and I'll, I'm a little bit scattered, but we'll get to Ephesians here in a little bit. But Romans 12 and, and the 12 and 13th and 14th verse of Romans, I said Romans 12, how about Romans chapter 13? Romans chapter 13 and a couple or three verses right here. He says, uh, starting in verse 12, 13, and 14 in the 13th chapter, he says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Uh, when we get saved, we cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. As I was thinking about that verse and some more verses that I will read here just in a little bit, but especially that 14th verse right there in the 13th chapter of Romans, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get saved, that's just exactly what we do or should be doing is putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, putting him on, I thought it's like changing garments, like like changing the outfit, like, uh, uh, you know, if we was, and I then this just come to my mind, I hope it'll be a decent example, but I was thinking of a fellow years ago, he was a professional football player, and I believe it was back whenever the Gulf War broke out, and he decided he was going to hang that up and go over there and fight. And he left being a professional football player to go over there. I thought he laid down one outfit, okay, that football outfit and helmet, to put on a soldier's uniform and helmet. And by the way, the guy got over there and got killed in action. But I was thinking that was an example. He took off one outfit, put on another one. That's what he says is we take off our old outfit and we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope that's a decent example for you. But when he says to put on uh, Jesus in his ways, and he also says there, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 
uh, when we put on Jesus, we're still in a fleshly body, okay? When we put on Jesus, there's still an enemy, and he can tempt our flesh. But Paul said right there, when we put on Jesus, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And I thought about that, make not provision. Uh, when we put on Jesus, we don't need to have a backup plan, okay? When we put on Jesus, we don't make provisions for a plan B. Uh, my example, if you was, and this is, I feel like a pretty decent example, if you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to cut down on the sweets, don't put a box of Little Debbie's hid in the back of the cabinet, okay, for a backup. Just don't do it. Just don't fool with it. I was talking to a fella about quitting, and I've not ever smoked. Never have smoked a cigarette, and, and don't mind smelling one every once in a while, but I don't think I'd want to to have one of them for myself. But anyhow, I was talking about a feller quitting, and some people say it's hard. I said, how did you quit cigarettes? He said, I was going down the road and throwed it out the window. He said, I didn't want them and throwed the whole pack out the window and didn't get no more. But if you was trying to quit smoking, don't hide a pack uh, back up there in the cabinet just in case. Or if you like to drink, don't put a drink back yonder in the cabinet just in case. I believe that's what he's talking about right there. When we put on Jesus, don't make no provision for the flesh, okay? Don't have a backup plan. Well, if this don't work, nope, we're going to put on Jesus and we're going to go with it, okay? I believe that's what he's saying right there. Uh, put on the Lord Jesus and make not provision for the flesh. If there's somewhere that would be a temptation for us, that would hinder us of uh, being in our Christian witness, don't go there, okay? That would be the best thing is make not provision for the flesh. Anything, uh, it, once we put on Jesus, uh, don't make it easy for ourselves to fall, okay? Make no provision for the flesh. But going on, uh, turn with me over to, if you would, Galatians, and we will get to Ephesians in a little bit, but Galatians chapter 3, and again talking about putting on Jesus and being a different person, Galatians chapter 3 and verse uh, 26 and 27. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27. Again, Paul talking, uh, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. If we've been saved, we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on. We've put on Christ. If we've been saved and, and by faith and baptized into Christ, then we put on Christ. It's just like I said there a while ago, just like putting that garment. We put on Him. We put on His righteousness, okay? Colossians chapter, and again, we're going to skip now Ephesians just for a second, but Colossians chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, again, Paul talking here, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. To me, it makes perfect sense we put, pull off that old man and lay it aside and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Uh, we put on after the image of Jesus. We put on, uh, supposed to be godly, okay? That's what we're supposed to do. What he's talking about right there in Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Now I'll jump over, if you will, with me to where we started or was going to start chapter 4 of Ephesians, uh, when we have put on Jesus, uh, again, we are a different person with a new outlook on life. I think that's where it's at right there, is when we put on Jesus and we've accepted him as our Lord and Savior, uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. The light comes on. We see what life is really about. We have a new outlook on life, and I believe that's what we'll read down here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 Starting in verse 17, we'll read several verses right here. Share a few thoughts with you. I believe it'll go along with this message of being a new person and putting on Jesus when we get saved. Verse 17, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. I'll just stop right there. Uh, he says uh, when we get saved, that we don't walk like other people that don't know God. That's what he's talking about right there. Gentiles, I know we're Gentiles, we're not Jews, but he's talking about people right there, uh, pagans, ones that don't know God. He said when we get saved, when we, uh, we do not walk as other folks walk in the vanity of their mind. And what did we say? 
Sunday morning, if you wasn't here, we was talking a lot in uh, over there in the in, uh, about what Solomon said there about vanity. What is vanity? The emptiness and fi- over in Ecclesiastes, the emptiness and and final result of all life apart from God. Paul's saying right there, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. I believe we don't walk like there's not a God anymore. We walk like we know there's a God. We walk like we know there's a life after this life. There's eternal life to spend. We walk by that, not like others walk. There's a difference. We're a different person. Having, and he goes on, and, then, and that wasn't a period there at the end of verse 17. He goes on describing those that don't know, know God, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. And that word alienated means separated. You know, these uh, folks that are not ever been saved, they don't know what we're talking about when we're talking about knowing God and living for God and life hereafter. They don't know about they're separated from the life of God. Through the ignorance, that's not that's not saying nothing bad about nobody. If we think about calling somebody ignorant, sort of a, 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 a putting them down, but it's the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You know, folks don't see God and don't know God. They don't really. They need to know, but they don't see God. And we we walk different from a person like that who, being pious feeling, have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. If you, you may or may not, uh, but I, I watch the TV occasionally, like I say, to, to get the weather most of the time, but in that five or six or seven minutes before the weather report comes on, you see all kinds of things that happened that night before, okay? And I'm like, how could somebody do that? Or why would people do that? Well, it's cause right here. They don't know God. They're past feeling, giving themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Main thing, they don't know God. That's the main problem that the things that's going on in the world that we live in. But he says, we're not to walk like this, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That's where the truth is. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust. We put off that old man and, and things like that and, and, and the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's what we do. We take off that old man, and that's why we don't act like uh, the other Gentiles, he said, because we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And and I read that verse 24 again, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You know, we was created in the image of God. But what happened? Sin come along, okay? We was created, though, in the image of God. And then what sin come along, but God made a way. He sent Jesus. Jesus died for our sin. When we accept that, uh, then uh, then we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're a different person, okay? Once we've been saved, we're a different person. That's what it boils down to. Starting here in verse 25 here, then he goes on to say this different person. He goes on not just to say, remember all those bad things you used to do? Instead of doing those bad things now, do good things. That's what he's saying right here. That's that change that's in us. It's not that we have to put off the bad things to do the good things to earn our salvation, but because we've been saved, we won't want to do those bad things, and we'll want to do what's good, okay? Read with me down through here. Verse 25, Wherefore, putting away, lying, that's something bad. That's something bad. That may have been our thing, was lying. We put it away. We don't just put it away, but we speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. He said, we're all in this thing together. Uh, I need to be a putting off line. I need to be speaking the truth because, uh, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I, I've said this before, whenever we don't and we claim to be a Christian, we're making God look bad, okay? 
we're, uh, we're, we're in this thing together. I need to be telling the truth. I need to be saying what's right or I'll make all of y'all look bad, okay? That's just the way it is. Uh, but we're members one of another. There he said to put off the line but speak true. Then verse 26, be ye angry and sin not. You know, it's not a wrong thing. I ain't saying we ought to go around mad about stuff all the time. But it's not wrong to be angry. There's things worth being angry for, okay? There's stuff that makes me angry that I see on TV, but, but I don't need to go out and try to harm nobody. I might need to go try to vote somebody out of office for doing some of the things they do. It ain't nothing wrong with being angry, but he said to sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, don't let it simmer, okay? Don't let it simmer. If there's something, a problem with me and you or something like that, let's just fix it. Let's just don't let it simmer because neither give place to the devil. He'd like for stuff to simmer. He'd like to stir us up. He'd like to get us uh, to where something would fester up and then blow off the handle and then all other things can happen at that point. But there ain't nothing wrong with being angry about things that's not right, but sin not. He says, be angry and sin not. Let him again... Uh, don't do the things that would do, but rather do things that are good. Let him that stole steal no more. That's a good thing. We is a thief. We don't need to be a thief no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give him that needeth. You know, if we was a thief and then we got saved and God put it on our heart and he will if we got saved to be honest and work, not work just so we can gather more, but so we can give and help somebody else, okay? That's what he's saying right there. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that, you know, I don't need to be talking about people. I don't know, for sure don't need to be a lying, but I don't need to be a tiring folks down and things like that. That's corrupt communication, saying, saying things that I ought not to. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, they stuff, that I don't need to be a saying that maybe I once said, but now they stuff I need to be a saying, okay? And it's edi it's it's which uh, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace and to the here. There's plenty if we've been saved that we need to be a saying. We need to be telling the people about God. We need to be telling them that God loves them. God will forgive them. They need, you know, we need to be encouraging people that's a trying to do for God and doing the right thing. We need to be encouraged. So not only do I need to keep my mouth shut about bad things, I need to be saying some good things, okay? So with the bad we put aside and the good we do. Going on, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's, a, that's something right there. Uh, we need to do what God would have us to do because when we don't, it grieves God. I heard this in a, in a message. Uh, somebody, maybe it was Adrian Rogers talking about the word grieve, but uh, uh, he said somebody else's kids will make you mad when they do things wrong or upset you when they do things wrong, but when your kids do things wrong, it'll grieve you, okay? And, and does that make sense? It grieves you when it's your own. It grieves you when it's somebody you love doing the wrong thing, and it when we do the wrong thing, it grieves God because he loves us, okay? We don't need to grieve God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, uh, when we do things that's wrong, that grieves God. When we don't do stuff that we ought to be doing, that grieves God. When we, um, maybe, you know, and, and we've heard about not hindering the Spirit of God and things like that. If God speaks to your heart and says, go up there and sing a song or stand up and testify or do this or do that, do it. Don't grieve God. Don't grieve His Spirit, okay? Uh, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. All them things that can build up to malice, that's a desire to harm. If you've got a desire to harm somebody, I can tell you that's not of God. Okay? That's not of God. I can, I can tell you that for sure because when they was harming Jesus, when they nailed him on the cross, when they was the, they beat the life about out of him, he said, Father, forgive them. Or they know not what to do. He didn't desire to harm. He didn't have no malice. If he could, he could have struck them all down, everybody down if he would have wanted to. Thankfully, he didn't. But uh, these things, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, uh, evil speaking, let it be put away from you with all malice. 
that's not part of the new man. That's some of the old man trying to shine through. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You know I said there a while ago, he don't tell us what not just what not to do, but he tells us what we ought to do. And we don't need to grieve God. We don't let this bitterness and wrath and anger and all that thing. What we do need to do, though, is be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And that's a whole other message right there. But, you know, we need to be forgiving because God has been forgiving to us. But I believe you see it there uh, here tonight, uh, the message, again, when we get saved, we're a new person, ain't we? We're a new person. We're supposed to be like Jesus. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Here tonight, I don't know anybody's heart, but maybe um, maybe we examine ourselves. You know, you never do know. There may be somebody here that's not ever been saved. You need to be saved by the grace of God, okay? And when you do, you'll be a new person. You'll have new desires. There'll be, there'll be things you won't want to do. I'll tell you that, that you won't want to do no more, and there'll be things that you hadn't thought about doing, but you'll, want to, you'll have a love for people. You want to know what's right in God's eyes, you'll be a different person. I'm going to ask you to stand here tonight. Um, you know, as I said and read there a minute ago, uh, over there in Romans, we've, we've been saved, but we're still tempted with things of the flesh. We're still in this fleshly body. They may be some things that reared back up. We need to put them down. We need God's help with that. Maybe we need to just come and thank God tonight for something. I don't know your heart, but if he spoke to you for any reason, somebody wants to come and pray, while the altar's open at this time, there'd be a need here tonight. Feel like that is sufficient. I hope and pray you've got something out of this word. I believe it's the truth, and I've got something out of it to study, and I hope and pray it's been a help to you here tonight. Tonight, would they be somebody with something on your heart you'd like to make mention of? Thank God for or something else that needs to be said here tonight. Anybody? that if you didn't hear that Karen was talking about the missionary and the things they said the other night and how um, we we're very blessed if nothing else they should have got out of that we we're very blessed and, and uh, there's a lot of folks that can't go to church like we do tonight they're not in free places and can't worship like we do tonight we got a lot to be thankful for but you know that's why we want to try to help and do what we can to be able to help there as well anybody else Praise report for Wanda Hutchinson. Uh, prayers and thanks and prayers. Her surgery went well. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pat and Janelle's got a grand a grandchild coming next. Or grandson, okay, coming next week. So. That mom and dad and that whole family. Anybody else? Good crowd tonight. I appreciate you being here. If nothing else to be said, though, I'll ask Jason if he'll dismiss us in prayer and you'll be free to go.